Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, I would like to continue a previous video entitled French Insurance Comparative Guide. So this is the seventh part of the video. At the request of Secretary General of the ACPR, undertakings must provide all information on contract held by intermediaries or concluded with third parties. They must also provide the ACPR with their written risk adequacy policies, the insurance code, and all information necessary for supervisions in the event of event that have led or may lead to significant changes in their activities and result, their system of governance, their risk profile, their solvency, and their financial situation. Companies must publish an annual report on their solvency and financial situation in the event of a major event that significantly affects the relevance of the information contained in this report. They must publish information on the nature and effect of this event. Put in place appropriate structure and system to meet this requirement and develop written policies to ensure to ongoing adequacy of this requirement. This report which must be approved by the board of directors of the supervisory board includes information listed by degree. It includes for example a describe or descriptions of the information that makes it possible to understand the main differences between the underlying assumptions of the standard formula and those of the internal model and explanations of the difference in the case of breach of the minimum capital requirement or a serious breach of this offensive capital requirement even if the problem has subsequently been resolved the amount of any supplementary capital requirement imposed by the ACPR 8.2 What key reporting requirement apply to insurance companies in jurisdictions Moreover, pursuant to European Central Bank or ECB regulation, insurance companies must report statistical data to the ECB concerning insurance assets and liabilities. 8.3 What key governance requirement apply to insurance companies in your jurisdiction when the Solvency 2 Directive was transposed? Common governance rules were adopted for the three insurance families. Thus, a person may not manage an insurance undertaking, be a member of a collegiate supervisory body, have the power to sign on behalf of an insurance undertaking or body or be responsible for a key functions if he or she has been convicted for less than 10 years of certain offenses such as money laundering, tax fraud, personal bankruptcy, or bankruptcy, including by foreign court. Article L322 of the Insurance Code Operational managers and head of key functions are subject to competence requirement. They must be of good repute competent and experience in their functions. Similarly, the member of the board of directors of the supervisory board must be of good repute, competent and experienced. The ACPR assesses their competency by taking into account their training and experience in a manner commensurate with their duties, as well as the competence, experience, and duties of the other members of the body to which they belong. The ACPR answers that such persons collectively have the necessary knowledge and experience of the insurance and financial markets, the company's strategy and business model, system of governance and financial and actual analysis, and the legislative and regulatory requirement applicable to the insurance undertaking 
appropriate to the exercise of the responsibilities assigned to the board of director of the supervisory board. This competence requirement is also assessed in accordance with Article 258 of Commission's Delegate Regulation. Managers of solvency to companies are subject to enhanced requirement according to the 4 I's principle. Their effective management must be ensured by at least two persons. The heads of key functions report to the managing director or the executive board and may inform them directly and on their own initiative or any event occurs. The managing director or the executive board must interview them whenever this is considered necessary and at least annually. The appointment a renewal of this person are notified to the ACPR rules applicable to companies concerned by solvency to the governance system to be put in place should answer should sound and prudent management of the business and can be the subject to the regular international review it should be based on a clear separation of responsibilities and include an effective reporting system. It should be proportionate to the nature, scale, and complexity of the undertaking's operation. Companies should develop and implement written policies in risk management, internal control, internal audit, and where appropriate outsourcing. To ensure the continuity and regularity of their activities, they should draw up contingency plans and implement appropriate and proportionate system resources and procedures. The undertaking must specify whether these written policies are the responsibility of the board of directors or the managing director or where applicable the supervisory board on the executive board. This policy should be renewed at least once a year and adapted to take account of any significant changes. They are subject to the prior approval of the board of directors or the supervisory board, as the case may be. The governance system includes the following key function, the risk management function, the compliance function, the internal audit function and the actuarial function. The company's internal control system include at least administrative and accounting procedures, an internal control framework, appropriate reporting arrangement at all levels of the company and a compliance function. The purpose of the compliance function is to advise the managing director or the executive board, as well as the board of directors of the supervisory board, on all matters relating to compliance with the laws, regulation, and administrative provision, governing access to and the conduct of insurance and reinsurance activities. It assesses the possible impact of any change in legal environment on the company's operation and identifies an assessment compliance risk. The internal audit function exercised objectively and independently of the operational function assesses the adequacy and effectiveness of the internal control system and other elements of the governance system, its findings, recommendations, and proposals are communicated to the board of directors or the supervisory board by the managing director or the executive board. The latter ensure that these actions are carried out and report to the board of directors or the supervisory board. Article R354 Strip 5 of the Insurance Code So the time is up and the article will be continue to read on the next video. So bye bye and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye.